Good morning, church. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Well, my name's Travis Schaefer. Um, Rob asked me to come up here and talk to you about what I thought made me a made man. Made man. Um, I did an episode with him a couple years ago for Father's Day. I've been coming to New Hope for a little while now. Um, I'm married to Whitney. My kids are Grayson and Piper. I'm sure I'm known to most of you by them, and that's totally fine with me. A um, little bit of background about me. Uh, I've been an ER nurse for 10 years now. Um, I did six and a half of those years for the United States Air Force active duty. Uh, I was an ER nurse for the Air Force as well. I think there's a picture of me back in the heyday. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't look that good anymore, unfortunately. Fatherhood and married life and civilian life has caught up to me. So <laughs> fortunately, that's my downfall on that one. Um, so I'm here to talk to you today about a struggle. The struggle is real. No, I don't, I don't mean when your wife asks you to open the pickle jar at home and you got to be tough and look like you're struggling to do that. I don't mean somebody disagrees with you and you fight them and, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the internal struggle that every man and woman in here deals with. Sin. Sin is the struggle. So with this, sin is, sin is difficult, right? It, it's because it's our own that we that we have to struggle against it. it. It's within us that we fight it, right? One of the greatest things about our faith is, is that God's never going to give up on us. He tells us that. He'll always be here for us. But I'm also here to tell you the devil's not likely to give up on you either, right? He's going to try and seek you out. He's going to try and create the subterfuge to your faith that sucks it away from you. He's always going to be there and always going to be around you. Peter 5, 8 through 9 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Also says, Resist him, standing firm in faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same suffering. So everybody suffers, right? Everybody deals with the struggle of sin. You know, it's kind of one of those things where you always have to fight against it. You always have to work towards being better you, right? And avoiding that sin. With that, you have to be very vigilant. You have to be present in your faith and you have to be constantly aware of the situations that you are vulnerable in that cause you to return to that sin. Whether it be old, poor behaviors, whether it be new, learned, bad behaviors, anything like that. There, the, these situations are going to be the situations that you're going to be vulnerable to those things in. But it's okay. We're also built for this battle. Um, Jim Collar talked to you last week about being made for this, right? In that he referenced um, Ephesians 6, 13 through 16. And basically what that is, is that's putting on the armor of the heavens, right? Building ourselves against this. How do we do that? You know, I mean, how do we, how do we combat these areas? What do, I mean, do we know what we're even talking about as far as these areas? This is where you have to be vigilant with that. You have, to, you have to be understanding. You have to be seeking out help to do that. And if you aren't familiar with that scenario where you're sucking into your own sins and things again, seek out loved ones. You know, I mean, whether it be your family, whether it be your small group, whether it be getting with Rob and praying with Rob, but also we should be praying to God, right? We should be looking to him to let us know where in these situations we're vulnerable, right? So the situation's of vulnerability. All right, yet, I mean, everybody has bad days, right? You get angry, you know, somebody rear ends you in the parking lot, you know, you have a fight with your wife or your husband, you have a bad day at work. These are the things that yeah, you're vulnerable in, the, in that sense, but these aren't really the ones that I'm talking about. Those we can just kind of deal with on a day-to-day. -day. It's part of the grind, right? The things that I'm speaking about are truly the down-for-the-count moments, right? The, the truly despairing, almost soul-sucking feeling moments that, you, that we go through as humans where we really are vulnerable to our sins, one of the first ones that I'm going to talk to you about is addiction. It's kind of a hot button topic, right? Everybody, everybody's pretty aware of this kind of 
situation. We're, we're dealing with it a lot in the United States today. Um, when I was in the military, I didn't have this kind of, I mean, you had your occasional, you know, soldier, or airman, or Navy guy that was addicted to pain meds or something like that, but there's so many programs and things that they can go through where it, it didn't really hit our register very much when I was in the military. Now I came back to civilian side and I worked on the west side of Columbus. Let me tell you, that was an eye opener when it came to addiction. Uh, whether it be pain medicine, opioids, heroin, meth, cocaine, anything that you can be addicted to, I've seen it in my emergency department. These are the things that really, you can, you can see a person transform in their process of being addicted. Like from one end of the spectrum, normal everyday Joe to wow, just wow. So one of the examples that I've got is a 19 year old kid. Um, he came in one night and he had overdosed on heroin. So for all intents and purposes, he was dead at the time. I mean, he was breathing, but it was two to three times a minute. Like he was not going to be able to sustain himself for very long on this. So we gave him Narcan, brought him back. Well, in that, once we brought him back and he was stabilized, he was like, you know, thank you so much. You guys saved my life. I really appreciate it. Thank God for you guys and you being here. Else I probably would have been dead right now. And I told him, yeah, you for sure would have been dead. Uh, there's, no, there's no doubt about it. You need help. So he went through some reform and, you know, we didn't see him for a while, about a year and a half. So then medic calls in, says they're bringing in an overdose, OD. He gets there. It's the same kid that I recognize. So we give him the Narcan again. And he was mad, like angry this time around. He had fallen into old friends and fallen back into that sin, right, that addiction. But he was furious at us that we took away this high for him. And just mad in general, just didn't want to be there, didn't want our help, didn't want to acknowledge the fact that we had just, you know, saved his life. None of that. Well, he got mad and left and came back two hours later dead. Stone cold this time. There was no bringing him back. He didn't have a pulse. We worked him for a few minutes. We intubated him. He was gone. So... These are the times, th this is one of the times that I'm talking about, right? The devil's seeking him out in his addiction, telling him, you can't beat this. This has got you. This has got your talent. You're, you're, you're a slave to this addiction, and you're never going to be able to leave this addiction. He's tricking him into thinking he can't beat it, right? One of the other examples that I've got for you is illness. So I took care of a gentleman, 42-year-old, father of three, very successful businessman, uh, very devoted to his wife and his family. He, uh, he came to my ER because he was really having some abdominal pain and ended up, uh, he actually had uh, one episode where he actually vomited blood. So it was very concerning to him, right? He'd had this pain off and on for the last six months and he'd lost like 30 pounds in the last few months maybe even 40 pounds. It just depended on whether or not you believed one thing he said or the other. But so we worked him up, did a CAT scan. CAT, CAT scan came back and it was not good news. So he had pancreatic cancer that had metastasized or spread to his lungs and his brain. The, the nodules that he had in his lungs were getting bigger. The nodule that he had in his brain, we consulted oncology and oncology basically said it's, it's not operable. There's nothing that we can do for him. Oh, the only thing we can do is try and prolong the time that he has left, but we can't save it. There's nothing for us to do. So, wow, you know, I mean, his kids were five, eight, and 10. His wife worked, but he was the sole breadwinner. She did it to just have something to do, basically. So what now? You know, what, what, do, what do they do? Hopefully he had something set up, but I mean, you're, you, can, you can't set up for that, right? Like you can't set up for that kind of loss. You can't, you can't have a plan. 
you can prepare as best you can, but the father of that family has basically got six months to live and then he's going to be taken out of it. His kids are young and impressionable. His wife works, but doesn't, she isn't the breadwinner. Wow. So now is that a situation where the devil's saying, this has got you beat now for sure. You're done. You're checked out. Why would he do this to you? If he loved you as much as he says he does, why would he do this to you? It's a trick. That's where you can buy into that sin. That's where it's at. That's where it lies. That deep down hole that they put you in. And that's his trickery. He's going to make that seem like that's God's fault. Last example I've got for you is loss. We all know loss is tough, right? doesn't matter if you're expecting it or if you're not expecting it. That's somebody that you love and care about that's keep being just taken away. The example that I have is a 26-year-old female, 22 weeks pregnant, came to us, lights and sirens. She was dead. The medics had worked her for an hour in the field. We worked her for two hours and 45 minutes. Those of you who don't know, that, that's, that's not, that doesn't happen often. Usually at that point in time, we know after we run a certain amount of cycles of ACLS and stuff on you. But we wanted to make sure that we did everything we possibly could for this young lady. She was 22 weeks pregnant, so the fetus wasn't viable. So what that meant was there's no chance of us to, you know, emergency cesarean section her to get the baby out. The baby was not going to live on its own without mom, no matter what we did. So... We were working her, husband showed up. They had gotten married the year and a half before that and were pregnant with their very first. She was gone. One of the nurses that I was working with said, ah, I don't know, he doesn't quite look right. He looks like, I mean, should we be thinking about foul play or anything like that? This man looked like this, vacant, completely in his eyes. Nothing was there. I just told him to come stand beside me because my role at that time, I was medication nurse running the crash cart and switching in for chest compressions on this poor woman. And he was in shock. I mean, how, how could he not be, right? His whole entire world, whole world, gone. Just like that. He had no preparation for that. She had a spontaneous bleed of, a, of an aortic aneurysm. She was gone. And even if we would have had vascular surgery at the bedside, there was she, the likelihood of her coming back from that is not very high at all. So what do you say to him? You know? His whole entire world is gone in the blink of an eye. No preparation for it whatsoever. Just stiff upper lip. Keep up the good fight. Head up, chin up. Now, these are the times that I'm talking about where despair is real. It beats us down. These are, not, these are not situations that I'm trying to make any of you feel sad or upset with or anything like that. I'm, I'm just trying from my experience and where I'm at with my job and what I do, just trying to make you guys aware that these situations can happen and they can happen quick, fast quick. And these are the times that we are vulnerable to him. What's to stop the devil from sneaking in on that guy and saying, ah, God really loved you. Would he have taken her from you? That's not him. That's not God's fault. That's not, he's not doing that. The devil is twisting that to make us fall back into sin. Despair. Don't give in to it. Don't let it own you. But that's okay. Because we know a guy, right? Yeah. We know somebody. He's going to fight with us. Right? We don't have to fight these battles alone. The thing is, is that we're, we're geared as a people to want to be the hero, right? What happens when we fall? We get up. That's something that we're taught at a very young age. Dust it off. Rub some dirt in it. You'll be fine. Can we, can we, can we just rub some dirt in those three scenarios? I mean, 
That's not something that we're coming back from on our own, right? That's not something that we on our own are going to be able to push ourselves up from and just be okay about, right? So in these moments, we've got the best corner man in the business. God is always going to be there for us. He says in Isaiah 41, 13, for I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. Right. Amen. Indeed. Now the problem is, is that we have to get over that pridefulness of wanting to be the hero. We have to get over that, ah, I can get up and I can do this on my own. Leave that. Leave that. That's not, for, that's not for these situations. This is a situation that if you try it on your own, you're not coming back from. It's too, you're too vulnerable at these stages. You need to be able to be dead to that old, prideful, shameful, just idea of, I got this. I can do this. God wants, wants to help you with that weight, that crushing despair weight that sits on us. He tells us, I'll take it. I'll take it from you. He would love to just reach down and lift it off of us, but he can't do that. We have to be okay with that. We have to give him permission to do that. We have to trust him to be able to do that. It's in, it's, it's in all of us. This is the, these are the struggle. Sin is the struggle. It's an internal struggle. It's our struggle. It's up to each and every one of you. You have to be willing to give that to him. It's up to you. It's up to me to trust him. 